Not guilty. That was former President Donald Trump's plea to the 37 charges against him related to his handling of classified documents and national security materials. So what's next? WCCO's Jonah Kaplan shares what's at stake both in the courtroom and court of public opinion. There is no precedent. This is it. But despite Donald Trump being the first former president facing federal charges, attorney Chris Keezer explaining the next steps are rather routine. Trump today was read as Miranda writes, he pleaded not guilty, and by law the case can move as quickly as a trial within 70 days. Keezer, though, expecting the Trump team to put up several roadblocks through pretrial motions. It could be asking the court to take a look at certain evidence in the case that they want to keep out of a trial. Maybe it's something that they thought was obtained illegally by the government. The Southern District of Florida, that is one of 94 U.S. district courts across the country. We have the District of Minnesota located in this courthouse in downtown Minneapolis, a much quieter scene here than in Miami. Besides the legal calendar, there's also a political calendar to consider, one that President Trump much more enthusiastic about. The Iowa caucuses just over seven months away. CBS News political director Finn Gomez telling WCCO the historic case is provoking yet another political fault line in America and Trump's hold on the Republican Party keeps getting stronger. There's such a disparity, there's such a contrast, Jonah, between how the Republicans are viewing this how, and how Democrats are viewing this and how the rest of the country is viewing it. Know Donald Trump is eating this up and gaining momentum by, you know, gaining fundraising right. strength. The first Republican debate is scheduled for August. Gomez says it's unclear if Trump will even attend. Jonah Kaplan, WCCO News. There is nothing in the U.S. Constitution that prevents a convicted felon or someone charged with a felony from being a candidate for president.